This is the first, uh, the interview number five for the Global Feminisms Project. Okay. Today is the 2nd of February, 2020, and we're about to interview Professor Binta Abdukarim. So the first question I would like to ask is, how would you like me to uh, address you? Okay, um, just call me Malama. And Malama is a generic word for a teacher. In Hausa. Yes, in Hausa. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yes. That's perfect. Mm. Okay. The light is very good. This looks great. All right. So we can begin now. Okay. So um, first of all, I'd like you to um, tell me a bit about your background. Where were you born and what was the date of your birth? Yes. Um, I was born in Ancho. Ancho is Ancho. a village in Kubo. It used to be the Greater Ikara before the, it mm. was split to Kubo local government yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the late 50s, so I'm a baby boomer. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, I was born in 1956. Okay. Yes. What What was the exact date? Second uh, February. Okay. I'm the 10th of February. 10th of February. Yes. Uh, 20, uh, 1956. 1956. Mm. In Anchao. Yes, Anchao. You know, we know Anchao. When I first came to uh, Zaria, uh -huh. I was staying in the city. Oh! And the, the f one of the families in the house where I was staying, uh -huh. they had their family was from Anchao. Was was it the Millers? Miller or no, no, no. Abdu? No, it was. I should. I don't remember Aisha's last Aisha. name. We went. We went to Anchao. We've been uh -huh. to Ancho. <laughs> Could be our family members because we're, okay. we're spread everywhere. We <laughs> have relatives in Zaire City, Usasa, Kano. You okay. know, the, vi the first vice um, chancellor was from ABU is, is from our family. Of ABU? Yes, Professor wow. Audu, Professor Aisha wow. Audu. Wow. So it may be the yeah, Aisha I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, we went there. I think her children are still living there. Her husband was from Anjou, that's what, and two of the daughters okay. were staying there. Anyway, that was a long time, that was 1995, 96. 95? I should know her, because we know each other. We know mm. virtually, mm. we know ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's fam extended family. Yes, yes yeah. it is, yeah. yes. Okay. Well, it could be Aisha from, is she bright? Complexion? She wasn't really educated, All so right. I don't know. Okay, no Sh problem. Whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so mm. you, so you're from Anchao, and so did you go to primary school in Anchao, or what was yes, your background? Yes, yes, I did, but but you see, I had a very interesting childhood. Mm. Uh, when I was growing up, I, I just I as far as I can remember, when I was just um, five years, mm. my dad taught me how to read and write but I was mm. I wasn't even going to school at that time kids have to be seven years old before we get into primary school mm. but because the family is made up of um, diverse people from different parts of Nigeria mm. and and it was the epicenter of um, the colonial legacy I grew up with people coming in and out so it was more like my first school mm -hmm. because I could relate with the white people with other Africans other Nigerians as well as my family members mm -hmm. so that was my first school but really I didn't attend primary schools in Ancho. I was in Kaduna okay Kaduna Baptist School okay yes and that was in 1965 so. um, Right. And then you continued your secondary schooling in Kaduna? No. We, I got admitted to Soba, Soba okay. Government Girl Science Secondary mm. School in Soba. Mm. Uh, incidentally, I was the first student to step my foot in the school. Because at that time, Ancho is so, I mean, even now, Ancho is very close to Soba. Yes. Because after I completed my primary school in Kaduna, mm. we moved to Ancho. Okay. I moved back because I was raised up by a, an auntie of mine. Yes. So uh, as, as of that time, you know, um, kids are not being raised by their immediate parents. Uh, there is this issue of kunya, you know, mm. the modesty. Mm. Yes. I didn't even know who my mother was, nor my dad, because my 
auntie took over mm. with her husband mm. as my mm. own parents, parents. Mm. so i didn't know until i went back home then i had to adjust again because the difference in life in the city and the <laughs> village is so remarkably different mm. i was a tomboy virtually in the town <laughs> but when i got back to ancho i had to mellow down and <laughs> learn all over again and you know as god will have it i was hoping to be somewhere in kaduna for my secondary yes, school then yes. i got admitted in to read it's at sober. the ggss yeah, sober, sober. Um, so that how i became the first um, student there because wow. it was so close i left home nine by some minutes after ten there i was yeah yes so huh. that's it huh. mm -hmm. okay well so then after you finished your secondary school yes uh, then where how did you proceed from there uh, from soba i went straight to what was then called the nigerian college of art science and technology you know, um, things were a bit different because you just cannot transit from uh, secondary school to university. Mm. We have the A-levels then. Okay. Yes, and so the A-level schools then, you either do the London GCE A-level mm. or you write IGMB. And the IGMB means inter Interim Joint Matriculation Board right. Exams. Okay. Uh, it was said by the then Northern Nigerian government, oh. uh, being supervised by the Amodibello University. Okay. So most of us that had just completed secondary school at that time had automatically got to be there. And at that time, caste was born. You used to call it NACAS or caste. There were three, mm. one in the northeast, another one in Kano, and then that of Zaria. Okay. So it was just a transition, very easy transition. Mm. Mm. I spent just about uh, six days from the last time I sat my mm. the, the, my my exam. YIC exams mm. to the time I was admitted into to read my A levels mm. Mm, because we didn't have we had that privilege of not having to wait for. Uh, uh, to be out before yeah. we get there because yeah. we were admitted on the assumption that we'll make it and yeah. we did yeah. Mm. yeah so in 1974 I was there up to 1976 okay when I got admitted into the university to read uh, geography okay mm. Mm. and I've been a geographer all the while okay I remember seeing that in some of your background information yeah the geography aspect of yes it. i am yes yeah. i am could, could you i'm just curious how does geography um does it fit in with your interest in gender studies uh yes it did you know um incidentally my coming to gender study i can say is coincidental mm. and probably i um, the, the, the what we call well, what i can call system analogy because the the setup of the university is that once someone picks you up as somebody who could do something mm. uh, meaning if the administration think that you can do something irrespective of your background you got to be there so mm. even when the 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 vice chancellor um advised or sought for my advice if i could be in the gender or to head the gender okay. unit i said okay look this will be my biggest crusade because it is more like writing an exam all over because <laughs> all the while i've not known anything called i've heard of the word yeah. gender i've been in feminist movement i'm an activist but gender whoa meaning a gender what is gender <laughs> i say okay let me try so that's why i transited from mm -hmm. being a geographer to a gender studies fellow but i'm still loyal to my geography mm. because that's what mm. made me what i am today yeah. but the interesting question you ask whether ge my geography has mm. helped into the gender i would say yes because geography deals with location yes with yeah. people with interconnectivity mm. and outcomes mm. the gender aspect of it is what i am dealing with that is the outcome because the interaction between locations and people's movement, migration, people's needs, 
the the interface between also the environment and what people are makes geography central. Yes, you're right. Yes. You're right. So in that case, I'm not losing anything either way. Mm. And, and, and more to say, the, 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 the gender aspect of it is even made me, has even made me a better geographer. Mm. It does. Yeah. Because I could see the interlink between the, the dichotomy of human dynamics in terms of population, the dichotomy and also the adaptations of uh, women and men having to adapt into an environment which may be either benign or too critical for their mm. survival. Mm. So you can see, we can judge from the way somebody behaves. If the temperature changes and someone behaves in a bizarre way, we could know as geographers. We don't have to be psychologists to understand human behavior because mm. we already know that the, there is what we call seasonal affective syndrome, mm -hmm. meaning a, a person is affected by seasons. Yeah. We also have to understand, I also understand that, look, you don't have to stay in a place where you can survive, you can always move. So the issue of um, um, migration mm -hmm. or population transition is nothing new. So if I find females moving from Sabongari, maybe to my village, I won't be surprised because maybe they found uh, maybe acacia tree or baobab tree which may be part of their survival meaning mm. it could be a source of their livelihood so why don't they move from Savongali mm -hmm. to, to my village and then it's, it's, it's of course an issue of um, survival within uh, an environment that you can't control at one end and survival within an environment you could wish to control mm -hmm. but at a certain level yeah. so that's the beauty of the geography yeah. uh, the historic aspect of it is there too because we have to go into archival records to see how cities evolve how um, people uh, came to be what they are so uh, w you know I, I cannot talk much about history because i'm not a historian <laughs> Yeah, yes. But you can talk about geography yes. and the relationship with gender yes. or women's yes. activities. Yes. I think that's really a good observation. Yeah. Yeah. So this is it. So mm. um, so when you first came to ABU to begin teaching, you were teaching in the geography department or you came directly to gender yes. studies? Yes. Um, the, 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 the national policy on education mm. mandated that after graduating in from the high school or from from college or university mm -hmm. you have to do the NYC oh, yeah. yeah so um, I was among the few that was lucky to be retained at the College of Advanced Studies okay. so I taught geography specifically all this issue of landforms mm -hmm. climatology mapping um, soil geography all oh. those I taught then there was a need then for the Department of Science Education yes. to have a geographer and okay. there was none. Wow. That is the Department of Science Education yes. in Amundibella yes. University. Yes, no, we saw it. It's across from industrial design. Yes, yeah. yes. So they scouted round and I was then transferred to the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. as an inspector. And I was also the director of schools. So one of my colleagues asked whether or not I would wish to move to the university to teach. Then I said, well, okay, since I was forced into education, it was never my wish to mm. read education. Mm. But you know, the, the, the exigencies of Northern Nigeria then was that there were very few women yes. in civil service at all levels. I was even denied scholarship to read geology. Then I said, wow. okay, now I will adapt because my granddad told me, you know, he emphasized that whatever I do, I just have to adapt. So mm -hmm. at that time, I just, it just flicked onto my mind. I said, okay, Binta, remember what your granddad said, mm -hmm. adapt. So I did the adapt. Yeah. I said, okay, I will come to the university and do my best, even though I never attended any college or <laughs> teachers' colleges, but the very limited um, 
education I learned from the university mm. came into being within me, it was awoken. So when I came, I was able to do both. But the structure of science education in Amundebele University is that we would teach the methodology, mm. we teach science methods. But then the actual curricula, the content of the geography is being taught in the faculty of physical sciences. sciences. Okay. So I do shuttle between faculty of education teaching mm. science methods to the department of geography mm. teaching environmental <laughs> management GIS and remote mm. sensing and then climate change. Huh. That's what I do. But then what about the gender <laughs> studies? <laughs> you know, gender comes indirectly when staff come to me to solve problems. Then I mm. say, oh, let me take it. Why okay. don't you do it, do this, do that, mm. do that. Mm. So um, I normally emphasize in my class that, look, whatever you learn, put gender into perspective. Okay. Because there is no way we could achieve what we wish to achieve no matter how scientific one wants mm. to be, or no matter how artistic one wants to be, has to take the two mm -hmm. sexes along. Yeah. And that's why, yeah. since I became the coordinator, I've been shuttling from one department to another, hoping to get to see the relevance of my subject area and this unit. Yes. Mm. I'm sure we are coming to that. Yeah. Uh, but this is it. So far, you would, uh, I, I, I have embraced sociologists, historians, um, those in languages, mm. medics, veterinarians, <laughs> even public admin. Yeah. We all get along. And if you see us, we wrap up, you wouldn't even, even imagine that I read geography. Because <laughs> I've, I've, I've blended yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just so a quick question. When did, when did this unit, the Gender Studies program here, begin? Uh, that was in 2006, two, 2003. 2003. Uh, it okay. evolved as a result of the need to um, assist indigenous students. Because at that time, the university had um, uh, funding from uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, okay. Carnegie, MacArthur. Ford Foundation, I don't know, mm. but Carnegie was specific on women. Yes, okay. Yeah, and more so that most of those that come from the countryside didn't have much to, you know, uh, to sustain themselves in the university. So the mm. vice chancellor, then uh, Professor um, Abdullahi Mahadi. Mahadi, yeah. Okay, yeah. now I think they, they, they had an MOU with the Rockefeller, I mean, Carnegie Foundation. Okay. So that way the gender unit came into existence directly under his office and the function was nothing but to disburse money to women or girls or students that can't even sustain themselves. That's the genesis of it. Okay. Uh, but when Carnegie um, subsequently rounded up mm -hmm. its um, uh, you Project, know, yeah. uh, assistance. Yes. Then the university became helpless because it was too much yeah. for ABU to handle both scholarship for males and females. Um, I can call that period between 2003 to 2015 mm. a period of silence in mm. court, meaning it was a period that really, really, really got students in a, in a quagmire because they could neither get to the vice chancellor's office to say, look, we need this and that, nor could they get to the lecturers and say, look, help us with money to sustain ourselves. Mm -hmm. So they had to struggle within whatever they could get, yeah. either from their homes or from relatives, to make it go. Because mm. sometimes also, 
the scholarship from the federal and state governments come in very late yes. and when they finally when it finally when they finally arrive is too meager yes. to sustain yes. them so within that period of uh, rest i can say <laughs> even though it's not a resting rest. period you know, uh, students really didn't get it easy do you do you think it was harder for girl students or than boy students for or? both it was it hard was, for it both it was hard for both mm -hmm. okay but it was um, I mean, I'm thinking maybe some of the parents or relatives of some of the girls' students would say, okay, you know, we tried to promote your education uh -huh. at university, but now that it's so difficult, maybe mm. you should just marry and mm. we won't worry about it. Yeah, but, but the beauty of it is that some of these girls hustle. They could plate hair, they could mm -hmm. do small okay. little things to keep themselves going in the hostels. Okay. But the boys could not do that. So yeah. it's not easy to really gauge as to who really gets okay. the the hammer. You know, the <laughs> sledgehammer was both on them because they had to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no. I mean, I was coming then. I didn't really know about the gender oh. studies program. Okay, right? all right. Because <laughs> yeah, I've been mostly working in textiles, also polio. I was interested oh, in polio. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the medics? I'm a medic. I'm an anthropologist, but anthropology, you know, it covers yeah, I know. It's, many it's, things. It's, a very, it's very dynamic. Yeah. And yeah. you could get ent 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 uh, mm, Medical anthropology, anthropology yes. Yeah. To go into geology because there is what we call That's paleontology. Right. Yes. You know, yeah. it goes through yeah. quaternary age and the rest yeah. and the rest. Look at how um, settlements evolved yeah. and so on. So yes. I, um, I want to shift the subject a bit. Do you? Um, how do you understand the term feminism? Hmm. How would you define? You know, it if you are to judge me, I will fail, but I will attempt. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a, a, a I think C plus. Or there are many <laughs> definitions. You don't have to feel like here. There's one proper answer. Uh, okay. Can I then, then attempt? Yes. I think feminism is an attempt for fe the, 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 the female gender to get the best out of herself. Okay. Yeah. This is it's, it's just an attempt for the f uh, female. And for um, so could you give me an example then of how feminism might support women getting the best out of themselves? Okay, you know, um, you wouldn't know that you have potentials until you get into either you are being cornered mm. or you are be given an assignment. Yes. In most times, at most times, women may not know their potentials. But here we are, we share in the world with male. Mm. They need our space. They have their own space. <laughs> they want to cross over to our space. But we said no. So by the time the woman said, look, you have your own space. Use your own space. Don't mm. use mine. <laughs> then the inner uh, struggle to have that space makes one to react. So feminism is a reaction okay. towards usage of space. That's a great definition, actually. <laughs> really, the space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Identity, because we aren't males, and neither could a male try to be a female, mm -hmm. even with the transgender. You know, yes. the LGBTQ and the rest. Mm -hmm. I know that, but then. It has to come with a cost, but feminism doesn't have to come with a cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you have the structures in place, we make the structures, say, look, this is what we want. We need to go into a trajectory, mm -hmm. and if you cross over, then it becomes something else. So the, 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 the need to have your space, to have an identity, brings up feminism feminism okay. or mix of feminism because the women or the the girls want to have an identity because we need an imprint mm -hmm. the imprint can be anything it could be intellectual it could be social it could be within the family it could also be global mm -hmm. mm. it, can, it can be it can be anything because each time I teach um, 
climate change with mm -hmm. my students. I said, look, some years back, 30 years back, mm -hmm. what you found, what we experienced is what is going on now. So don't tell us climate is changing. Climate has changed, but the status quo remains. Mm -hmm. All you should look at is the, are the variations in extremes. Okay. The weather pattern mm -hmm. has gotten extreme. Mm -hmm. So also is the human behavior. And so also <laughs> is the level of feminism. Mm. But you see, feminism is gradually becoming archaic as far as I'm concerned. Feminism is being swallowed by gender studies now. Okay. And you cannot have, there isn't much dichotomy between mm. feminism and activism and gender mm. relations. They are all the same. They are mutually mm -hmm. inclusive. Mm. But if you want to really catch in court one aspect without going getting along with the other, mm -hmm. you, you may not get much. But the drawing board, the, mo the main thing is understand who you are as a female. Okay, then can move you, ahead. Can you give me some examples then of some activities that you would say promote this sort of feminist mm. pr perspective that e you know for identity or uh -huh. being who you should being who you want to be e in yes. your space yes. yes oh so many well so give me some many. examples because you people see, like uh, to know concrete yes uh, in the university there are staff male mm. and female yes okay intellectually we've been taught virtually almost the same thing okay. we have been made to read similar to go through similar curricula similar training mm -hmm. we are given maybe what i can call blueprint yes. to teach okay those are fundamentals now the difference is when it comes to space by the time a male lecturer thinks that his teaching methodology is the best mm. and you as a woman must be construed into his own planet. That's the first one. That's the first thing. Because if you look at the way we teach we women, we teach students with mm. a passion. We see the students as our own kids. Yeah. We see them as babies. <laughs> the male lecturers, even with their finest of teaching methodology, mm. see them as youngsters that need to be disciplined first <laughs> mm -hmm. in some cases bullied because there are there is bullying between male and male and, and students mm. most of the bullying is done by male lecturers so the psychology of understanding mm. between the male lecturer and the female lecturer is different okay now what happens if there are crises in the university if students said, look, enough is enough, because we had crisis, the first person the students will come to are the female lecturers. Okay. So, because they need to have a sense of belonging. So that is when our adaptation will come. How do we now make the students adapt to this type of threshold we put them? And that is why you find that students normally get closer, male students get closer to female lecturers. Mm. To female, uh, to female lecturers. Mm. But there is another dimension to it. That's just the preliminary. The, the, the high level of adaptation within the university is that when it comes to roles, mm. You as a lecturer or I as a lecturer is teaching, I'm getting the best out of students and I get along with students, yes. then jealousy comes in. <laughs> you know, um, the issue of who is she comes in. Leadership tussle comes in because most of the departments or the mm. subunits that have been run are being run by, by men. By men. Yes. So as it is, that lady or we, the women in the university, have to find a way of survival. And that is when adaptation comes. And that is our biggest problem even up to now. Yeah. Telling them, look, we aren't 
we aren't interested in your you being the director or you being a dean or you mm, being mm. Um, head of state we are on um, a head of department we are interested in you giving us our space wherever we can walk and then we get the outcome but by the time you said look even the space our own space you come in mm, mm. and we will not even adapt within the space or the artificial space you create for us then trouble begins yeah. yes but as it is also the situation in the university is not too bad though it is cute most of the uh, faculties mm. and departments are headed by males we have just yeah. one female dean yes. and two female heads of departments wow. one dean a female out of 13 faculties two heads of departments no three heads of departments female out of 47 departments wow, wow. one coordinator out of 17 directorates it's only me yeah. i'm the only female coordinator they don't even call me director they call me coordinator <laughs> so these are some of the dynamics you can yeah, see. Yeah. Yes. What, is, what do you know? What the proportion, approximately, of faculty, um, female, male faculty at AB? I do. Just very abysmal. Mm -hmm. It's three to one. Okay. Sometimes, if arithmetically I am right, it can even be more less than that. Yeah. Because yeah. I made the graph. It's 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 sad. Yeah. It's very sad, and it's even worse in the sciences. Yeah, I think that's mm. true actually in the U.S. Though I mean, there've been a there's been a real effort to get s female students into science and engineering yeah. courses. Mm -hmm. We have so, STEM because yeah. I have STEM. It's, yeah, here. it's STEM. Mm. Yeah, because I have to I have to develop STEM here. I'm rigorously pursue it because I have to make all the female science teachers and some students register for Nigerian women in STEM. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, some of these problems are global problems. Yes, they are. But, yes, they are. Um, so, I'm just wondering, is, is part of it, I mean, I think what you're saying is it's partly men wanting to take, to maintain their space and maybe edge over into other spaces. But mm -hmm. is it partly, I'm just wondering, I mean, or is it partly that's, that girls' students don't continue at the same rate as male students? I mean, the enrollment, for example, of students at AVU. Okay, um, you see, we we can only generalize what we can see. Yeah. Uh, at the time, students got admitted. We tried to maintain the the vice chancellor tries to maintain a fair ratio. Okay. Of male and female. Mm -hmm. But even that, there are some courses females do not even come into. But the real thing is, when they finally get registered in their different faculties, mm. you find that the males, the females are timid. Mm. They get very timid, they are not proactive. Class representatives, male. Class supervisors, male. Mm. Everything, male. You just wonder. What really is what? What went, what went wrong? What is the problem? Mm -hmm. Just as you said, yeah. a student. Most of my female students are brilliant. Yes, but they wait on the male to do the, most of the talking, most of the <laughs> answer question, answering this and that and that. That's you so see? interesting because sometimes I remember when I was at university, I was always, I'd be watching. How many times do the male raise their hands in class? Fine. And how many times, yeah, than the females? And it, you know, even, even there, there's this idea that you should be modest. If you're mm -hmm. a female, Cunha. Yes, the modesty. Should, yeah, I think it's partly socialization. From the gender, home. Gender, yeah, gender socialization. From the home. And you know, and I think, um, you see, <laughs> that's a, it's a dilemma. You are being pulled between two worlds. You trying to be yourself and the others being trying to see, look, conscrew to follow your religious guys, this and that and that and that. Mm. Now, 
the Kenya issue that's the modesty and the rest mm. is a cultural issue yeah. but then the issue of Islam also comes okay. but then Islam does not say no. look you mm. as a female should be complacent you should just sit down and for the male to do the thinking rise <laughs> up God gave you the intellect do it and you see what happened as time goes by in northern Nigeria, I can talk for northern Nigeria, mm. far north, not even central Nigeria. <laughs> by the time you speak out, you, 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 you make your points, say, ah, ha, this lady is going out of her way. No more kunya, no more this, no more this. Sometimes they'll even question your belief. Is she really a Christian? Is she really a Muslim? But that doesn't matter. Humans are humans. Modesty is modesty. It mm. cuts across all beliefs, you know? And then when you have to uh, bring a change, change, positive change is good, irrespective of religion. Mm. But I don't know why the, this, this level of um, attachment Mm. to <laughs> you know the level of attachment or rather a blind I can say blind attachment mm. to some cultural mm. issues are still with us yeah because they they are retrogressive yeah. you know we need the best from the wall but 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 why don't we do something also why don't you just do the little best you could and leave others to continue but instead of now you know you move into your cocoon you get marooned within yourself say oh because male are supposed to take care of females uh, 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 this is this 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 blah blah then you kill your innate potential mm. and then you become virtually useless because as far as i'm concerned if i stay with anybody who doesn't even bring change into my life positively that person can just move and let someone come to my life. And mm. that's exactly what some of these students don't really understand. Yeah. And by the time you get to tell them, look, stand up, do something. Mm. The same male lecturers will pull you down. The same religious persons, ulamas, mm. I'm sorry to say, will pull you down because the woman is always at the bottom and mm. let her remain at the bottom mm. i don't know where they got that notion of islam this is not islam this is not religion maybe mm. it's male dominance mm -hmm. the tendency to dominate everything they will think for us they will do this everything for us and this is exactly what is going on even in the university yeah. see an engineer graduating she cannot walk a medical um, graduate with MBBS, she the husband said, no. Or the, or the husband won't allow it. The yeah. husband yeah. will soon allow. Yeah. All because of the social, socialization yeah. Yeah. we get from home. Yeah. And parents are also responsible. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask you because yes. we heard an example of, a, we were talking to one woman who was doing was a school administrator, this is in Kano, mm -hmm. and she was saying that sometimes even, you know, the father in the family, it was an extended family, the father was telling her that she had, the student had to be, the daughter had to mm -hmm. come from, had to be, was being withdrawn from the school uh -huh. because not he, but his elder brother who was senior to him and therefore has authority, yes. said he wants her to marry. Mm -hmm. And she had one year remaining. Yeah. So this woman, she said, you know, I pleaded with him and he was crying. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do anything. And you cannot just imagine. Why? Because it's absurd. Because it's education. Even mm. with the Quran and the, the, the Islam, the first thing is read. Then how can you even uh, do your best in religion yeah. Without, yeah. Without, without knowing how to? Sorry, I cut you short. No, I'm yeah. just, it, it just was such a striking example because the father wanted her to continue, but the older brother, and they even, I think they took him to the district head, 
mm -hmm. and presented the case mm -hmm. that she should remain in school. And the district had said, sorry, we can't do anything. It's a family matter. It is. Yeah. It is. And you see the family structure. Mm -hmm. There are, there are dyn role dynamics. Yeah. If it's not the grandmother, it's the mother-in-law <laughs> or someone senior within a household. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. so, so all the time, that hierarchy is there. You cannot even break it. And because everybody has his right within his family, um, the police, the, the, the courts and everything cannot interfere mm -hmm. and they become mm -hmm. helpless. And yeah. that's why the status quo still remains. Okay, well, so th then this is a follow-up question indirectly. Mm -hmm. Are there, what are the, you, I mean, you describe yourself as an activist. So what are the, some of the activist activities that you're involved in? say <laughs> with student with female students for example yes uh, you see with female students i'm guilty because i don't do much okay but within the general activities of activism mm. um i'm a forerunner <laughs> why because i belong to a very strong union okay that's the academic uh Staff Union of Universities. Okay, AUP, yeah. ASU. Yeah, ASU. I've been a financial secretary. Okay. I'm a member. I'm an advisor. And I'm still a very active member of that association. Why? You know? And there is also what we call NAWAKS. That is the uh, National Women association of academics in the university mm. we call it NAWAKS. okay what what also does it's not mm. that we just look for salary no mm. we study situations in the country then we box we classify each the polity the security mm. the education and then the social structures. When these four conflict, when the three conflict with education, mm. that's when ASU raises up. Okay. Why I became an activist in ASU was automatic because the injustice we see around us, no normal mm. teacher, you know, that's why they call me Malama. No normal lecturer can see it and keep quiet. Number one, discipline. The discipline of students. Mm. We at the moment have what is called ASU uh, uh, anti-corruption mm. unit. Whereby any staff Mm. of students that misbehave is brought to justice. So I understand. Yeah, well. Secondly, out there in the public, you maroon our money in billions of dollars, take it to Swiss banks, take it to France, mm. and then we as academicians, we just keep quiet, we close our eyes simply because we want to follow you as leaders? Mm. No mm. way. Mm. So that's another crisis. So in most cases, you see ASU at loggerheads with the polity. <laughs> because we want to know why. Why is our money stolen? Mm. Why wouldn't the universities be funded? Why wouldn't primary school be funded? Secondary schools? Why wouldn't you give, I mean, find avenue for employment for the youth? Why don't you make women live a comfortable life? They are the mothers of your kids. If you subjugate it, or if you really uh, compromise 50% of your population mm. and think that only 50% will carry the mantle, then you are in trouble. And that is why you find that even within the ASU itself, the ASU structure has many females and males. Okay. And that's how I became one because automatically, if you are a university lecturer, you are one, unless if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And I found it very rewarding. I may not be, when our salaries get stopped, or when we are <laughs> threatened with police, with imprisonment, or with whatever, that builds 
our resilience. At least we know we are doing something for the helpless. It's not for ourselves. Yeah. I could leave this country and get a job somewhere. Mm, it's true. But what about the young ones coming? Mm. What about the status quo? We need to change. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I became an activist. Not that I'm confronting the, the, <laughs> the <laughs> you know, uh, what exists. Mm. But, but it's a voice. Yes. Mm, it's a voice um, doing the best. Yeah. So I, I know you, you raised this issue, and I know it, it may be a bit embarrassing, but could you say something about, you know, some of the issues of um, anti-corruption unit activities? that are involved with students or lecturers? Yes, yes. You know, um, there is a dual job or dual function that mm. I undertake in the gender unit now. Okay. Uh, there we are as teachers mixing with students. There is the vice chancellors expecting the best from us then problems arise. Mm -hmm. The relationship between male and female students, one, harassment, mm -hmm. relationship between female students and their male lecturers, problem. There is also a problem between female, female students, especially maybe friendship and the rest, but mm. the worst of it is the relationship between male students, male lecturers, and female mm. students. Yeah. As a gender coordinator, we are supposed to see a balance. But as an activist or part of ASU, we are supposed to see a university with a good working relationship. Mm. Sexual harassment is something we cannot mm. condone. Any lecturer found doing that has to blame him or herself. But there are times when the female students give themselves onto the male. They force themselves onto the male lecturers yeah. for grades. Yeah. And for a week, lecturer, he goes. Mm. And if care is not taken, there are times when these female students really tape the record and they get the males in trouble. We've had to dismiss about, um, the university had to dismiss about seven male lecturers for mm. that. Mm. The exam office, yeah. lecturers, this and that. Yeah, so I that's think I why read something mm -hmm, about that recently. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's why we have to have that anti-corruption unit in ASU. Because mm. the, the struggle for the academics is not just for funding but to have a very sane relationship, conducive relationship mm. for excellence. Because we, we, we are supposed to we are supposed to train youths that will be useful, not youths that, 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 that will crumble every structure that is being set by our mm. predecessors. Yeah. So to maintain that status quo, we have to fight within. Yeah. It's not just fighting outside, but we also have to fight within. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's so interesting to me that some of the things that issues that you're raising are problems that even at my university. Mm. So they've even recently put on our website that if you have any problem with any kind of sexual harassment, yeah. report it to, and it gives the, the contact information. Yes. You see? Yes. So and you know, uh, the vice president of the country had just launched what we call uh, sexual harassment uh, dis database okay. <coughs> and wow. sexual harassment uh, um, I think is is a link okay uh, we were sworn in and I'm representing the academia okay so what we did is we got back to our university and certainly what we call hotlines these hotlines mm. are meant for staff mm. on students mm. if anything goes like that it, it reported straight into the, the yeah, yeah the the wow. agency so, so this was you went to abuja and they had representatives from most of the universities yes uh, yes uh, four universities wow. two from the south two, two in northern nigeria what were the two in the what were the four universities uh, there is lagos okay uh nsuka okay uh, meduguri then amadubelo university. university very soon there is somebody from 
um, joss okay. that will be co-opted to yeah. so making five. Yeah. Yeah, but four of us have been consistently at the meeting. There are other agencies, the police, mm. the civil defense, the, um, the army, ICPC, EFCC, we mm. all are in it. Yeah. Yes. But somehow it seems like having a hotline would be more accessible to, to students, yeah, to, to staff students. and students. Yeah. So we, we, we've been advised to get back to our institutions mm. and domesticate what was taught. Yeah. And that's just what we are doing. Okay. You know, we sometimes have to engage in uh, uh, discourse every day, okay. every week. Yeah. Uh, we have a radio FM. It's, okay. it's a BBC outline called Radio Radio uh, Zero One Point um, F One Radio in the okay. university. It's an outlet mm -hmm. of the BBC. Okay. Mm. So we do have uh, um, discussions every week. Wow. to enlighten wow. the, the staff and students mm. uh, and then sometimes to the topics may depend on the significant because we grade you know there are the immediate the medium mm. and the long mm. so mm. when we study issues like the students are coming now so okay our focus is to you know tell students that look there are vultures there waiting there are foxes <laughs> waiting yeah. so be, be very careful of those fox or foxes <laughs> or hyenas or vultures because <laughs> they're there to grab you you know <laughs> so if you do you are on your own so mm. after that by the time the session gets matured maybe mid or towards the end of the session then we focus on exam and practices yes yes okay. and so on and so forth All mm. right. So, so, so at each time of the students' um, <coughs> activities, mm. we know exactly the hammer, the sledgehammer to to go after. <laughs> yes. On. yes. So you said that you were involved. When or oh, when did this program start? Because I hadn't actually heard of this. The academics, the um, the one with, that was working with Osimbajo. Oh, in um, it began in July. Okay. And we so were this sworn year. in. Yes. Wow. We were sworn in in. Uh, or 1920 uh, November 2019 yeah mm. it, 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 it got reactivated because there was what we call verb act that is violence against uh, mm, persons okay okay that act was never signed for the country we're still waiting on the legislators to sign but the Abuja verb act was signed Okay. So, so the implementation is skewed, and because of that, the vice president thought, it, "Look, let's get a coordinated national body in a way that pressure will be mounted to the national assembly <laughs> to sign this thing, so that people can be caught, can be accountable mm, for mm. the problems they are causing." Yeah. But you know, incidentally, the lawmakers are also guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Because they come to the university, pack our beautiful women, sleep with them. I'm sorry to say that, but it's real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just hope that lawmakers will come to their senses and realize that they are messing up a generation. Yeah. 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 It's not just the present, but the generation, yeah. the generations to come. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. So um, you mentioned another organization that you were involved in, the yes. National Association of University Women. Is that yes. a, that's a national yes, association? Yes, it is national. So what kind of activities are involved? Uh, we support the main activities of the the the, of the ASU. ASU. Okay. Yes. This time, we add more issues. For instance, how do women adjust to bridging? The workplace, the demands of the workplace, and that at home. Mm. How do we adjust to raising a child to be a complete human? Even if it's 99.9, .9, at least if we get to 80%, <laughs> we've passed the test. Then, how do we bring out the best out of women mm. to become leaders? Yeah. How do we become the best out of women? to go out there and represent Nigeria. Because every time 
the developing countries, Nigeria, this, 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 this. When it mm. comes to Human Development Index, Nigeria is abysmal. When it comes <laughs> to this, Nigeria, so we said, look, what are we doing? Because mm. we, we, we have a stake. If we don't encourage women, even with what we inherit from our homes, been made to be a bit benign in, in, in most of the national assignments. Mm. But we that are lucky should be seen to be the flag bearers yes. of a movement that should get these girls up, make them who they are, so that they understand their potentials to become good ambassadors even mm. when we retire. Mm. And we've achieved by doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, Nawax uh, does not, or Nawax was not able to really scale through some of these things because mm -hmm. the men are always there. Mm -hmm. Say, look, you chose to be in the public arena with mm -hmm. all of us, mm -hmm. so do it. Promotion. You need a hundred papers or publications. Mm. You also must have to give a hundred. So no compromise. We said yes, no problem. Okay. But then, let it be that the timing of lectures. <laughs> we can come at six o'clock, mm. seven o'clock. Let it be maybe eight, ten. Mm. Yeah. So that. Hide and um, cut a mouse game is still there, yeah. but Nawaz is still active, and we support the national body of ASU. Okay, mm. uh, this is actually you know, it's so interesting. You're reminding me of things in the, the, uh, that are <laughs> problems for you, university women. Yeah, in the states, I think their salary is still seventy-five percent or eighty percent of male salary. Oh, really? I think so. And I mean, we we have the same salary yeah. structure now. No discrimination. There's no dis No, no, no. Because I think, I'm not sure exactly how it works. Even if you have the same um, level, you know, associate professor, professor, whatever, mm -hmm. it depends on how your chairman, for example, um, promotes, you know, promotes your case. Okay. And they make a suggestion about how okay. your salary should be gauged. No, no we, we don't have that dichotomy in Nigeria. In, okay. in our you university. See, you see. No, we don't. So Nigeria no, we actually. don't. Really, really. <laughs> but the problem is the timing. Mm. Um, you could see that a male may get promoted much earlier than a female counterpart who does virtually the same, the same thing. Work. So how does that work? Yes, they because have the same number of papers. It's the same number of papers, but, but, but you see, sometimes the acceptance you find that the male's papers are easily accepted oh. and you know it, you, you have to pay we have to pay for publications for this for that for the men the men hustle they mm. may be a bit a little bit economically more buoyant mm. they could send their papers abroad they could send their papers to other universities there's some some but journals that don't you don't have to pay to publish yes but they're very competitive yeah actually. i know yeah. i know and one thing that inhibits women is the information yeah. women have less and less information and once the male within our university get the information they circulate it among mm. themselves yeah. yeah so so that's the problem yeah. but but payment is is is, is, is the it? same yeah. Mm, yeah. there isn't any difference yeah I, I actually i'm not sure I'm not sure what in my university the exact balance is but in gen in the country mm -hmm. so it's outside it, including university but broader is uh -huh. that it's, I think it's still seventy five percent. Okay. Um, but and it could be for lots of different jobs. Did you did you challenge the status quo? Me? Yeah. No. No. Another Kenya. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know you know why it's so funny to me, but it's true. I don't. I don't care about money. Mm. Yeah, but that's good. You live in peace. I know, but the problem is because if, if money is the priority, the status quo. Yeah. So that's the problem. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If money is a priority, then you have problems. Because mm. do the job first. Yeah. The no. money comes, it becomes mm. useful. Yeah. No, mm. I enjoy yeah. I enjoy anthropology mm. anthropological research. Yeah, you can ask good. Hasana. 
know, we... Asana. <laughs> you, you will eat Asana's robo, <laughs> you will take fora and luno <laughs> in our villages. <laughs> you speak the language. Can yeah. I yeah, okay. Okay, so I guess, is there any... Are you involved in any international uh, activism or scholarship programs? Yes, I am. Okay. Personally Maybe. or the gender unit? Personally, I am. Both. Okay, I'll talk yeah. on my first, okay. then the gender. Okay. Um, I'm a member of what we call Auli Akinamama or Africa. Okay. You know, Akinamama or Africa is a baby of uh, the wife of the governor of Ekiti State. Okay. Yes, um, BC. Okay. Yes, BC, fire me. Yeah. Uh, then there is uh, Amina Saluhu as a member. Mm. Uh, Amina Saluhu works with. Um, uh, MacArthur Foundations. Okay. She, she's also the mover of this sexual offender database. Okay. So at the Akina Mama or Africa, women from all parts of Nigeria, of mm. Africa come together. Okay. We discuss on feminism, on leadership, on so many issues. Wow. And it becomes an umbrella of the continent. So it's as if we are mm. the spokespersons mm. of Africa. Wow. Uh, Initially, it was based in London before she got back to Nigeria. Okay. Uh, I think it is now, there are still some international women, Nigerians, mm. that are still involved. Im involved. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, then the second is the World Victimology, Association of Victimology. Mm. Yeah. So I'm a member of the World okay. Association of Victimology. Okay. You know, uh, victimology is a very recent concept. Mm. Yeah, and you see how do people adopt? How do we rehabilitate this and that and that? Mm. Let us look at victims, maybe victims of war, victims mm. of family violence, victims of political anarchy and the rest. Mm. Yeah, and each of us do what we could do. Um, the first conference held was in was somewhere in Nairobi. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was probably in Nairobi or Amsterdam. I'm okay. not sure. What year? Uh, it was in 20 2017. Okay, so recently. Yes, mm. that was the first conference. Okay. The second conference was held in 2018 mm. in Nigeria at uh, okay. Covenant University. Okay. Uh, at that time, we were able to look at global gender issues even the the wife of the vice the president of uh, sri lanka was around okay then the 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 president was there too he's he's wow. he's, he's from netherlands mm. there are other others there are so many some wow. from the state some from mexico mm. some from australia they all came wow. we really saw we 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 we, we saw victims in reality not that we see th we mm. saw them physically mm. but we felt what such victims are going through yeah. their full cases the syrian yeah. war this and that and that and that mm. family breakdowns and then there was a, an issue which i was really really hammering on there was nobody who could say look where was this and the issue is what happens to the victims of hurricanes? Okay. Victims of weather extremes. Yeah. Victims of ecological mm -hmm. imbalances, especially mm -hmm. when war ends. Mm -hmm. You know, when war ends, there are dynamites. Yeah. The soil becomes barren. The land is messed up. The trees are gone. Everything mm. is gone. Mm. So I came up. That's when my geography came, came, in. came yes. in. I said, okay. When victims of such circumstance come, mm. let's look at the processes first and then decide on the global uh, um, maybe orientation. Meaning, if our problem if the global problem is that of war and the bastardization of our biodiversity, mm. let that country that is being messed up look into its neighboring country for assistance. Probably they may have the same ecological mm -hmm. thing. 
So what stops people from the messed up area getting resources from the neighboring? Because mm -hmm. you don't have to move from maybe Nigeria to Japan mm -hmm. to get fish. Mm -hmm. If you get mackerel in the in Nigeria waters, you don't need to eat tuna. <laughs> it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So local or immediate adaptations, I give that proposal. If it is global, like the change in climate or mm -hmm. the, what people say, change in climate, which I refer as extreme weather pattern changes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you cannot stop the sea from rising. You can't stop the temperatures in the sea from cooling. The best we could do is, okay, let's go back to treaties. The North-South Atlantic Treaty, mm. these trading organizations, this and that and that, and adjust our trading patterns. If there are excess resources where there are warm waters, bring it to where cold waters zones are needed, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. If Japan, has problems with pollution. Mm. You know, there are islands in the Pacific which is as big as your state. Mm. If the problem is pollution, sea pollution, okay. Mm. And there, isn't, there is water everywhere but it's polluted. Mm. Go to Greenland, sign a park with maybe Canada, transport the icebergs mm. to Japan, melt it and you get your fresh waters. Mm. So that's how it is. You know, Victims do not have to be victims of human interplay, but they could also be victims of natural disasters. Okay. So that's why yeah. I am relevant there. But then the gender comes in when victims of home, family violence are being talked upon. Yeah. This is something that this department of gender also looks into. Yes. And that is why when I came into being, when, when I started work as a gender coordinator, we looked at research. What are those researches that would be meaningful for solving current issues? Mm -hmm. How do we empower the vulnerable? Where do we get resources for them? And then how do we train the trainers in case we aren't even in the, in the forefront? So this is how we, uh, we are relevant in the World Victimology mm -hmm. Unit, mm -hmm. and then we have to also meet every year. Okay. This year we met in Nairobi, okay. and the issue of Nairobi is that of farming, okay. that is farming activities, mm. uh -huh. then security, okay. the security wherever you find uh, uh, among the Maasai, okay. donkeys are being eaten. People come in, Chinese come. The Chinese come. I know. And everything. The donkey, uh -huh. the donkey Masai, problem is an issue in Nigeria as especially well. Especially Jigawa State. Yes. There is a market you find just before you get to um, Megatari. Mm. Donkeys are shipped into the east. So d d uh, we, we, it's, we, the we skin, it's the skin that they want. Yes. It's not the meat. Yes, yeah. they get the skin. Mm -hmm. So we, we talk about fundamental human and animal rights mm -hmm. in the Nairobi conference. We oh. talked about rehabilitation of the displaced. We also mm -hmm. talked about the need to get good mm -hmm. transport and water. So all mm -hmm. those areas we, mm -hmm. we dealt with. You know. okay. uh, um, uh, the, the, be the beauty of it is that the lady, a lady from New Jersey is now the head of the World Center of Victimology. Okay. And she's called Jenny. Jenny something. I will okay. give you her full name. Mm -hmm. A very I active can get it lady. From the, yeah, I can get yeah. it from on the uh, Yeah, website. very, very proactive. Yeah. So, so this great. year, next year, I don't know whether it will be somewhere in Europe or mm. South Africa or Malaysia. I don't know. Yeah, I really That'd don't be know. That'd be interesting, though. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just. Um, do you have any questions or comments for me before we close? Yes, I do. You see, I'm at a, a dilemma. I don't mm. know what to even call myself. Am I an activist? Am <laughs> I a feminist? Am I a gender? Or am I even a scientist? If I say all, you know, mm. I pass the test. But if I say I'm a feminist. There are issues in feminism which I may not understand. Mm. If I say an, I'm an activist, 
there is a limit to which I can go out there and make noise. <laughs> 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 but if I said, look, I am a teacher. Yes, 100% a teacher because mm. I make my living as a teacher. Yeah. And I see the product of being a teacher. So many ministers were my students. Mm. I have yeah. vice chancellors, wow. sitting vice chancellors that were my students. Wow. I have so many that are deans of departments. Mm -hmm. I have some that are governors. Mm -hmm. So you see, that has given me fulfillment. So I can say, yes, I am a teacher. That's why I said, call me Malama. But again. then, for the scientists, yes, I belong to the world, all this mm -hmm. association this of this, yeah. this which, which we have to. Now my question is, where does, where do we draw the line? <laughs> It's not easy. Yeah. So I want to ask you, please, where do you belong? Since I have this dilemma, yeah. do you share this dilemma with me? You know, um, I'm an indirect activist <laughs> and I'm interested in women's issues and I publish on women's issues okay. and women's roles. For example, we have a project in Ghana, in northeastern Ghana. Okay. You know, they were doing small scale gold mining in that area. Yes. And one of the things, they're using mercury, which is very detrimental to people's health, including oh, yes. women's health. Especially lead. Yeah. So, um, we started a group to, uh, it's called Nabdam Nim uh -huh. Company. Okay. Where they're, I don't know if you know about neem trees, but they were oh, planted. Very, they're I all do. over West Africa. The British you know, planted uh, a neem tree is an invasive species. Yes, of course. But it has benefits. It does. It does. And, and people here don't quite appreciate how many, because you can it use does. the seeds to, to make oil, mm. and that oil is, has great medicinal properties. Mm. So mm. that's what we started, and they're now selling neem oil in the markets, mm -hmm. and people really like it. Oh, so we in Ghana or Nigeria? In Ghana. Okay. In Ghana. You All know, right. I think Nardik, is it Narik? Mm, Narik. Narik has, uh, a, Narik has a neem project. Yes. But I don't think it's, you know, this is specifically focused on women. Mm-hmm. The women that were doing the mining, we wanted to give them an alternative livelihood. Yes, just like we do in the GGW, Great Green Wall. Mm -hmm. We have a, a platform for alternative livelihood. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sorry, yeah. okay. So, Go I ahead. mean, I, I would call that a, an aspect of feminism because I'm interested in supporting women's rights and women's activities. Okay, I'm now I know. I'm not a political know. feminist. I don't, go and okay. march. I don't go on marches. But, okay. but I'm the really supportive of anything that will help women. Women. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that case, we're in the same club. I think so. I, in, <laughs> in fact, hundred percent the same club. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's that's yeah. correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. But but are you an activist? Well, I mean, if you consider somebody who writes about women's <laughs> rights. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. But the other aspect we know, you are also an academician because mm. you have brought up students, you have brought up, yeah. you've molded youths that will be proud of you. Mm. 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 So no, we have, actually it's funny, I have two, um, how many of the four, four of them? Four of the graduate students that I helped advise, they now are professors. Oh, you see? And they now have, uh -huh. they have, they both asked me to do chapters for edited volumes that they're putting together. Good. Oh, so you see? see, so it's, you know, we, we stay, <laughs> okay, we help all each right. other. Okay, yeah. that's good, yeah. that's yeah. good, yeah. that's good. And one thing I forgot to also uh, ask, mm. you see, um, the issue of youth and role um, roles in the family. Yes. The boys play soccer. They go mess up. Mm. The girls stay at home. They do knitting. They do the mm. cooking. Mm. Does that operate in your area? In your setup? I think that's still... I, there are more girls in sports now. Mm -hmm. And there's Basketball. more... Basketball. Basketball, also soccer, yeah, baseball. Okay. But you know, it's true. It's not the same as not for boys. Too. But th that's one issue that's been constant: is that girls have been demanding more support in universities for girls 
for women's sports events. Okay. It shouldn't all the money shouldn't just be going for boys, okay. men's sports events, but for girls as okay. well. Okay. All right. And um, in terms of cooking, you know, I think there are many men now who, <laughs> who, who are actually cook. involved in cooking. Yeah. Yes. And incidentally, there was a cooking competition. A male student topped the class wow. in the university. You see? Yes. Yeah. Now, my last question is, mm. you know. Um, you see, whatever, I, I'm glad you're an, an anthropologist because mm -hmm. whatever you see, whatever action, there are reactions. Now, uh, within a family structure too, the relationship between the husband and wife, mm -hmm. and if they have kids or they have children, yes, the roles they play. In northern Nigeria, the man gives the command and it's done. The woman is to obey. But here is a situation. The woman goes to work, the man also goes to work. Mm -hmm. The lady of the house, that's the wife. She has domestic. Yeah, wow. Yeah. But then as the kids are going up, the males are made to cook, sweep the house, mm. clean, wash clothes. Then the females do the gardening. <laughs> the hoeing, and then they delve into courses that are male dominated. Yeah, yeah. The reaction is always a negative one. Yeah, yeah. What can such a woman do? To change. But that, the husband yeah. agrees. The husband is okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, the husband washed the diapers of the younger ones, yeah. and he helps sometimes when she's sick. He brings her breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Now, within the northern Nigeria um, setup, setup, yeah, is 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 a taboo. Is something that you can't even hear. If mm -hmm. a situation like that comes up, and the woman is seen to be the dominant one, mm -hmm. she dominates mm -hmm. the husband. They say, "Oh, this." I know she's mm. she's everything. She has done even her male, her female kids are now studying male courses. <laughs> you go to the house, the male, her male sons, her sons are mm. the ones doing the cooking. Mm. If uh, if if you find a lady like that in northern Nigeria going through that, what what advice can you? <coughs> Sorry such a family because mm. it's an, <coughs> an issue of adaptation yeah. 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 I have um, <coughs> pineapple juice I made some pineapple juice for you you don't take pineapple I made it sorry sorry so I so you know, I, you I know it's a just difficult problem. I mean, it relates to the whole issue mm. of cow, the kokisha. Yes, it relates to the issue of mm. uh, early marriage for girls. It relates to parents wanting to take their children from school, yes. their daughters from school. Yes, you know, I, honestly, mm -hmm. I think it's partly a matter of time. I mean, that you're giving me an extreme example. Yes, but little by little. Mm -hmm. Especially if the husbands are prevent showing a model to their sons. In subsequent years, those children, those male children, will be having similar ideas that we don't have to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All we right. don't have to be following the rigid structure of society. I mean, people, people think now, you know, we're in a modern era. So things are changing. So in northern Nigeria. I mean, yeah. I know it seems slow and difficult. Very, very. But little by little, I honestly, yeah. I really think things will be changing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why I asked? Mm. This is me. You've answered my problem. This is what I'm going through. Yeah. yeah. She knows when you are just a little baby, when <laughs> your husband your husband and yourself were moving on. Fine, isn't it? Yeah. I was there as a lecturer. Mm. My husband mm. gave me all the support. Mm. 
he took care of them. Yeah. My daughter is a geologist. Mm -hmm. The other one is a plant scientist. Wow. The first one is a pilot. Wow. The second one is in Germany. The number five <laughs> is in Netherlands. Mm -hmm. He's doing this robotic, yeah. this mm -hmm. Oman aerial vehicle yeah, yeah. with the drones. Yeah. Mariam is in Canada. She's <laughs> the plant geneticist. This is my problem. Yeah. That I have dominated my husband <laughs> more than he did. Yeah. So I'm always at loggerhead with yeah. people. Outside. Sometimes yeah. I get isolated psychologically. Yeah. Yeah. But it's somebody like her husband that understands mm -hmm. me. It's true. So, yeah. you've answered my question. Okay. I pray that sometimes there will be that change. Mm -hmm. I just no, you're part so. of the, as you said, you're a front runner. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Okay, yeah. so on that note, mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to thank speak. Thank you very us. much. Thanks and a lot. Thank you for Global Feminist. Uh, perspectives. You're yeah, welcome. Okay. You're yeah, welcome. Thank I you. hope to see more of you in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you.